Like I already explained, we're going to keep an array of the user's swipe points so we can draw a shape resembling their slicing. To make this work, we're going to need four new methods, two of which you've met already. They are touches began and touches moved, which you've met already, plus touches ended and redraw active slice. You already know how touches began works and touches moved works. The other touch method, touches ended, works in exactly the same way. First things first, we're going to add a new property to the class so we can store swipe points. I'll scroll up and say here, var active slice points is an array of CG point, like that. We're going to tackle the easiest methods first, touches moved and touches ended. All touches moved needs to do is figure out where in the scene the user touched. Add that location to the slice points array, then redraw the slice shape. So that's easy enough. Uh, redrawing a slice shape will be done using a method called func redraw active slice. I'll leave it empty for now. We'll come back to it later. Let's do touches move for now. So I'll do touches moved. Inside there, say guard let touch is touches dot first else return. So we couldn't read the touch, just bail out. Get the location of the touch by doing that location equals touch dot location in self. Add that to our active slice points array by saying active slice points dot append that location and then redraw active slice. That. So it goes into the array of all the points the user's touched in the current movement. When the user finishes touching the screen, touches ended will be called. I'll make this method fade out the slice shapes over a quarter of a second. We could remove them immediately, but it looks ugly, and leaving them sitting there for no reason would rather destroy the effect. So we're going to use skaction.fadeoutwithduration 0.25 to make them fade out really fast. We'll say touches ended. Active slice bg dot run skaction dot fade out with duration 0.25. And then the same thing for the foreground. So they both fade out over a quarter of a second. So far, this is all easy stuff. But now it's time to look at an interesting method. Touches began. This needs to do several things. So let's just dive straight in and write it. We'll say touches began. First, we're going to make sure we have a touch, of course. We'll say guard let touch is touches.first else return. If we're still here, it's a new touch, so we're going to remove all existing points in the active slice points array because we're starting fresh. So we'll say active slice points dot remove all, keeping capacity true. So ditch all the points we have right now. Next, we'll get the location where they touched by saying let location equals touch dot location in self and append that to our active slice points array by doing active slice points dot append location just like we had with touches moved we also want to call redraw active slice so this this will go ahead and say update the sk shape node as needed and now importantly we're going to call remove all actions on the background slice and the foreground slice like this active slice bg dot remove all actions and active slice fg dot remove all actions and this matters because the next two lines are active slice bg dot alpha is one and active slice fg dot alpha is one now these four here are important because when touches ended is called we say remove these things from the screen hide them using alpha zero over a quarter of a second. So if we stop touching and then start touching again immediately afterwards, this action will still be running. They'll still be fading out and it will fight with our call to an alpha set here. So we want to say before we modify the alpha, remove all the actions, remove this fade out with duration action from our two slices so they appear fully on the screen. Now where things get interesting is down here in redraw active slice. This is going to use UI Bezier path again, and this time we're going to use it to make curves rather than a single line like we had with the fireworks. Let's dive in by writing some code here. We'll start by saying if active slice points dot count is less than two, so if we have fewer than two slices right now, i.e. zero points or only one point, 
we've not got enough to make an actual line on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and clear out the shapes and exit the method. We'll say active slice BG dot path is nil. Active slice FG dot path is nil and return. So clear both the path and exit. Next, we want to make sure we track only up to 12 slice points in our array. We need to remove the oldest ones until we have at most 12. This stops the swipe shapes from being too long. So we're going to have a condition after this one saying if active slice points dot count is greater than 12, active slice points dot remove first. Let's remove a certain number of items here. Now, the number of items we want to remove is however many we have right now minus 12. So we'll say active slice points dot count minus 12. So if active slice points is 15, has a count 15 right now, we'll minus 12 to get three, and that will remove the first three items. Next, we want to start drawing a new path at the first swipe point, then go through each of the others drawing lines to that point. So we'll say, let path equals a new UI Bezier path, path dot move to active slice points zero. So go to the very first slice point we have on the screen. And now we'll loop through from one up to but excluding active slice points count, adding that point to our path. We'll say for i in one up to less than active slice points dot count path dot add line to active slice points i. So move the path to that point again and again and again. And now most importantly, we'll assign that path to our two shape nodes. We'll say active slice bg dot path is path dot cg path. And same thing for active slice fg like that. So they both use the same path being drawn. At this point, we should have something we can actually run on the screen. So I'll press Command R now to build and run the game. And hopefully we should see our background picture, our score label, our lives count, and all being well, some swiping nodes on the screen with our shape nodes. So there's our score, there's our lives here. As I click and drag around, all being well, there we go. Boom. That is our swiping on the screen. Oops. There is fading out as well. Fantastic. Okay. Now, before we're done with the slice effect, we're going to add one more thing, which is a swoosh sound that plays as you swipe around. You've already seen how SK Action plays sound files, but we're going to use something different here. You see, if we just play the swoosh sound every time the player moved, there'd be a hundred sounds playing at any given time, one for every small movement they made. Instead, we want only one swoosh sound to play at once. So we're going to set the true a property called is swoosh sound active, make the wait for completion of our SK action true, then use a completion closure for run action so that is swoosh sound active is set to false. So when the player first swipes, we set is swoosh sound active to be true, and only when the sound is finished do we set back to false again. This will allow us to ensure only one swoosh sound is playing at a time. First, we'll add a property to track it. We'll say up here, var is swoosh sound active is false. And now down in touches moved, uh, da -da -da, down here, we're going to say, if not is swoosh sound active, so if we haven't currently got a swoosh playing, then we'll call a new method called play swoosh sound. Play swoosh sound. Let's write that before Xcode complains. Uh, I'll leave an empty thing there for now. There we go. I'll just pause there for a second and discuss what this has to do. So it's gonna start by setting is swoosh sound active to be true. So no other swoosh sounds are played until we're ready. So we'll say is swoosh sound active equals true. Next, we want to play one of the three sounds. We already have over here swoosh1.calf, 2.calf, and 3.calf. 
So we pick a random number between one and three and make that our sound name. So we'll say let random number equals int dot random in one through three. And with our sound name, we'll say let sound name equals swoosh as a string with string interpolation random number dot calf. So bring in that exact swoosh sound one, two, or three. Now we'll wrap that inside an SK action play sound file named by saying let swoosh sound equals SK action dot play sound file named sound name with wait for completion true. So SK action will wait until it's fully finished before triggering its completion closure. And now for the important part. We're going to go ahead and run that thing and provide a completion closure so it will know when that sound is finished playing. So we'll say run that thing on our main scene directly. It's not actually a game node here. Run that swoosh sound. And for its completion closure, we'll say weak self in. Then self question mark dot is swoosh sound active equals false. So that'll stop it playing more than one swoosh sound at any given time. Let's give it a try now. I'll press Command R to build and run the code. And now if I swipe around, we should see only one sound at a time. Perfect.